take one. Stand, sing it out now. Page 221. Oh, how I love Jesus. Right on the first. There is a name I love to hear. I love to see. Turn to page number 112, and let's sing, There is a Fountain. Page number 112 in your red book. Sing it out. There is a fountain filled with blood. Page 112. Alrighty, on the first. Jesus. 
Stand up for prayer. Before we pray, before we pray, we're going to sing another hymn here in just a second. And I just want to bring, boys, stand up, pay attention. All of you, stand up. This month, the theme was we need s'more Jesus. Okay? And uh, we're going to be having s'mores after church tonight. We're going to have a, a good time. I had Brother Jacob cut about 20 sticks today. So we're going to cook some s'mores later after church. Uh, shh, boys, boys, I need all of you listening, not talking, all right? So tonight we're going to sing another hymn, page number 176, More About Jesus. This month the theme was Psalm 34, 8. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. And we're going to talk tonight about how we need more Jesus in our life, Okay. And we're going to sing about that right now. Page number 176, More About Jesus. All right, let's sing it out on the first. More about Jesus would I know. More of his grace to others show. More of his saving full to see. More of his love who died for me. More, more about Jesus.
on this side, boys on this side, we'll have a word of prayer, be praying for Brother Caleb tonight as he preaches, adults feel free to use the altar as well, pray for the young ones that are here this evening, no doubt lost in the house tonight, those trying to figure out what they're going to do with their life, whether they're going to give it to the Lord or give it to their self, so let's be praying for them this evening, everybody bow your heads, if you have not to come pray, up at the front, please pray in your seat. Lord, we thank you for everything you've done for us and the blessing that you've bestowed upon us. Lord, again, we thank you for another opportunity to be in your house this evening. Uh, Lord, I pray you touch each and every person, Lord, that's made an effort to come to church tonight. Lord, that you'd bless them for that. Lord, I pray if there'd be somebody here lost tonight, Lord, you'd convict them, show them their need of a Savior, and Lord, that they'd give their life to you this evening. Lord, I pray for those that are here tonight, Lord, they may be saved, uh, but Lord, they're not living for you, Lord. They're not living a life dedicated to you. Lord, I pray you'd convict them of that, show them their need to be living right. Lord, I pray for the preacher tonight. Touch Brother Caleb as he comes. Lord, I pray you'd give him clarity of speech, clarity of mind, Lord, freedom in the pulpit to say what you'd have him to. Bless and use him this evening. Lord, I pray you'd touch our vacation Bible school coming up, Lord, that we can be a help and an encouragement, Lord, to these kids that are coming. Lord, that we can just give them the gospel. Lord, give them you. Lord, that you can make a difference in their life. Lord, we thank you. Can we ask you to bless this service in Jesus' name. Amen. Somebody with a testimony on your heart? Something you want to say or do at this time? Want to give the Lord praise? Anything at all? All right, Brother Caleb. Well, good evening, everybody. It sure is good to be back in the Lord's house. Amen. 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 All right. Well, uh, young men, let's let's do this. Let's put our song books in the corners of your pews. Brother Connor will help you. Let's get a hold of a Bible, and uh, let's try to go to the Lord in God's Word together. Flip with me the book of Romans, and uh, Romans in chapter 5. Romans chapter 5 is where we're going to be, and uh, if you need to share a Bible, that's fine. If you can't read, why well, don't even worry about it, amen? You don't even have to worry about it if you can't read, but, uh, but if you can... It's good to see God's word for yourself, okay? Good to see God's word for yourself. Romans chapter 5. Appreciate you young people being here. I hope you know that. It's a real blessing uh, that you would come and be a part of our service. Uh, as a matter of fact, we are honored that you are here. You are our special guest. And uh, I want you to know that. That's right. You're our special guest. Thank you for being here. Um, it's a blessing. Now, again, we're in Romans chapter 5. Somebody help that young lady. She's looking for a Bible, I think. Is that what you're looking for? Is your mama Tasha? How do I know that? I work with your mama. I didn't mean to embarrass you. But tell her I said hi, okay? <laughs> All right. Uh, praise the Lord. Okay. Romans chapter 5. It's good to be saved, ain't it? Amen. Good to be a Christian. Good to know that I've been blood bought and my name's been written in the Lamb's book of life in spite of me. But just because of the goodness of an almighty God, I don't have to die and go to hell. Amen. Amen. But one of these days I'm going to get to go over there where he is and make my home eternal, everlasting uh, with him. 
And uh, that's what this month's theme is about today. S'more of Jesus. Amen. And after service, we're going to have some s'mores. Let's go. Amen. Uh, yay. How many of y'all have never eat? Shh, boys, shh. How many of y'all have never eat a s'more? Have you? Well, I asked how many of you have it. You've never eat a s'more? Vontae, you never had a s'more? Farrell, you really have it? Oh, you have? You just like telling lies in church, Farrell? Is that something you <laughs> look at him? He said, yeah. And then he doubled down. He said, yeah, I do. I like to tell lies. You don't like to tell lies in church, do you? No, surely not. Anybody else never had a s'more? Tim, never eat a s'more. Well, a s'more is a wonderful thing. Somebody say amen. You take two graham crackers. Brother Zach did us. Y'all listen now. Shh. It's time to listen, not time to speak. Listen to me. Brother Zach did us a service, and he got us cinnamon graham crackers. Come on. And so, and then you take a marshmallow, and you build a fire, and you melt that marshmallow on that fire, put it on that cracker, and then you take a cube or square of, uh, of, of Hershey's chocolate, put that on there, mash it together. I felt the Holy Ghost on that, didn't y'all? We need s'more... S'mores is what we need, s'more s'mores. <laughs> no, we need some more Jesus. And that's just a play on that word, s'more. And I hope you'll enjoy some s'mores after service. But uh, again, now y'all listen to me. Look up here at the preacher. Uh, the idea, again, we need more Jesus. Amen. 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 We need more of Jesus. Uh, we don't need more of man-made ideas. Right. Amen. Amen. Right. We don't need more... Uh, popularity, amen. amen, amen, young people. Amen. I know in school and around your peers, pop, look up here now, popularity is important in that realm. We don't need more popularity. Right. Uh, we don't need more of anything this world has to offer now. What we need is we need more Jesus, amen. more of Him in our life. Now, we're in Romans chapter 5, correct? How many of you got your Bibles to Romans chapter 5? If you're there, say amen. 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 Very good. Look at verse 9. Romans chapter 5 verse 9. The book of Romans has uh, wonderfully, it's got the word more is in it uh, about four or five times here. And we're going to look at those and see just exactly how it relates to the Lord Jesus Christ. The first one I want you to notice about Jesus is that we were rescued by Jesus. We were rescued by Jesus. So we're in Romans chapter 5. Look at verse 9. Look at verse 9 and read with me. Not out loud. Just read along with me. The Bible says, Much more, there's that word again, more, much more than being now justified by His blood, we shall be saved from wrath through Him, for if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of His Son, much more, there it is again, being reconciled, we shall be saved by His life. There in this passage of Romans chapter 5, Apostle Paul is writing to the church in Rome and he's talking about what it means to be saved. Look up here at me. What it means to be saved. Now, Brother Zach made mention of this earlier. And many of you have probably heard, if not every one of you, you've probably heard your teachers in your classroom talk about being saved or salvation. Now, y'all listen to me. Try not to be easily distracted. Being saved. And sometimes, if we're not careful, we kind of make the mistake of not describing or explaining what exactly it means to be saved. Well, the first understanding you've got to realize of what it means to be saved is when someone is saved, listen to me now, it means they've been rescued. Correct? Right. Have you ever heard somebody, you know, maybe uh, they were about to step out in front of traffic and a car was coming, and their friend grabbed their arm and pulled them back, 
and they looked at their friend and say, oh my goodness, you just saved my life. In other words, I was about to step out in front of a vehicle and get hit, but you pulled me back, you rescued me, listen to me now, and therefore I did not get hit by that car. Well, when we're talking about salvation, the first understanding that we, that we need to realize, look up here now, is that we're being saved from some type of danger. And so what is that danger? What is the danger that, that we're being saved from? Look at verse 10. Look back with me at verse 10, chapter 5, verse 10. He said, For if when we were enemies we were reconciled to God by the death of His Son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved uh, by His life. Amen. So we're being saved uh, by the life of God, uh, by His goodness and by His love, and we're being saved uh, by the Lord Jesus from His wrath, from the wrath of God. You say, Brother Caleb, what is the wrath of God? Well, the wrath of God is a place, hands down. The word wrath means anger. The word wrath, listen to me, it means fury. And so what Paul is saying is, listen to me now, he's saying that Jesus, uh, all of those who have been saved, have been saved from the wrath of God, the fury, the anger of God, and the wrath of Fury and anger of God is a place. Look up here now. It's a place. It's a literal place. It's a terrible place. It's a horrible place. It's a place that was designated so that the devil one day would go and be punished forever and ever. That's why that place was created. That place was created for the devil and all of the angels that followed him when he rebelled against God and turned his back on God and tried to elevate himself above God. Listen to me. It's a place called hell. You say, Brother Caleb, that's a bad word. Now you better not go around using that word haphazardly because guess what? You can use it in a bad way. But hell's not so much a bad word as it is a bad place. It's the worst place. There's never been a place worse than hell. Hell's a place you can't even fathom. You can't imagine how bad it is. The Bible tells us that it burns forever. Forever. Those who are in hell today, listen to me, are weeping and wailing, the Bible says. That means they're crying and screaming. It's a horrible place. And that place was designated for the devil and the angels that rebelled against God. And then God created man, Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve, one man, one woman. And he told them there in the Garden of Eden, you can have of any fruit in this garden except for one. And if you eat the fruit that I tell you not to eat, you will die. And Adam and Eve both ate the fruit. And guess what? Mankind has been therefore been cursed because of our sin. Sin is when you do what God tells you not to do. Or when you don't do what God tells you to do. And so Adam and Eve sinned. God cursed their, the seed of Adam. And every boy and girl born of Adam and Eve since then has, listen to me now, bore on themselves the fall of man. And if they die without God, according to the scriptures, they will enter into that place called hell. It's a real place. It's a literal place. It's a place that everybody that dies without God goes. That's what salvation is. Salvation is to be rescued. We need more Jesus, don't we? Amen. 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 We need more Jesus. We don't need more hell. We don't need more people to die without Him. No, we need more of Him. Why? Because He is the only avenue by which we can be rescued today. And we see that here in this passage being now justified. How? By His blood. The Bible tells us that Jesus, as He died, 
He was beaten. He was, listen to me, he was crucified. They beat him to death. He had many wounds across his whole body. And according to the scriptures, he shed every drop of his blood. And the Bible tells us that without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sins. And so not only do we see the shedding of blood, but then we see our spotless blemishes. You say, Brother Shirley... That's an oxymoron. Yes, it is. That's when two words who are opposite are put together. And that's what took place for you and me when we got saved. If you've ever been born again today, if you've ever received the Lord Jesus as your Savior, you have spotless blemishes. How, Brother Caleb? Because you have brought upon yourself blemishes that His blood uh, has washed away in spite of who you are or what you've done or where you come from or where you you've gone to that's what his blood can do for every man and boy and girl and lady that puts their faith in Jesus Christ as their savior we see the spotless blemish we see the saved believers how brother Caleb by faith by faith we are justified by faith you put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ You put your faith in His atoning gospel. What He did so that you might be saved. And unless you've ever done that, then you are not saved today. You say, whoa, Brother Caleb, are you telling people that they're not saved? I'm telling people what the Bible says. If you've never received the Lord Jesus as your personal Savior, and you've never, listen to me now, by faith, repented for who you are and what you are and you die without having done that you're not saved and if you're not saved you're not listen you're not rescued and if you're not rescued then you are going to step out in front of that vehicle if you will if you was to die you will enter in a place called hell it's a horrible place and I don't want not one of you to go there he said, Brother Shirley, what do we do? We need more Jesus. We need, we need some more Jesus. We need to hear more about Jesus. Listen, hey, we need to sing more about Jesus. Boy, I love standing up here and seeing children wide mouth singing for Jesus Christ. I like, seeing, I like seeing old men do it too. Amen. I like seeing our ladies. I'm talking about rare back and sing. Why? Because we know who we're singing about. And we need more singing about him. Amen. We don't need more singing about the honky tonk. We don't need more singing about drinking. We don't need more singing about drug addiction. We don't need more singing about fornication and adultery. We don't need more singing about half naked people living in sin and shame. Hey, and if they die in that mess, they're going to go to a place called hell. Amen. We need more Jesus today. And that's the only answer for you if you've never been saved. If you've never been saved today, we must have more Jesus. Y'all look up here at Brother Caleb. Look up here at Brother Caleb. Number one, number one, we see that we are rescued by Jesus. Number two, verse 15. Hope you still got your Bibles open. Verse 15. Number two, we are redeemed. We are redeemed to Jesus Christ. Number one, we're rescued by Jesus Christ. Number two, we're redeemed to Jesus Christ. Look at verse 15. The Bible said, but not as the offense, so also is the free gift. For if through the offense of one... That's talking about Adam. Paul's with me. It says, For through the offense of one, that was when Adam and Eve sinned, the Bible says, Many be dead. In other words, because Adam sinned, everybody dies. Then it said, Much more. Boy, I like that part right there. Much more the grace of God And the gift by grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ, hath abounded unto many. Amen. 
Number one, we're rescued by Jesus. But number two, we're redeemed to Jesus. Back to Jesus. You say, what do you mean, Brother Caleb? Listen to me. Mankind was created perfect. Perfect. When God created Adam and Eve, the Bible says that Adam would walk with God in the Garden of Eden. They were in fellowship. They were still in a relationship. Man and God, one and together in their relationship. Do you understand? Do you understand? Young people, do you understand? This means yes. And this means no. God and man in fellowship together. Do you understand? Good. Guess what? Man sinned. And there was a fellowship that was broken. Do you understand? That was the enmity. That means enemies were made. God and man was turned away from one another and set into an enemy's position. So what had to happen? The sin of man had to be atoned for. And what Jesus did, look up here, is Jesus atoned that sin and brought back man to God in fellowship, redeeming mankind, listen to me, back to God. Not only when you got saved, if you've ever been born again, if you've ever been saved today, not only were you rescued from hell, but you were redeemed to Christ. Amen. Listen, when I got saved, I was seven years old. I didn't know much. I barely probably could read if I could at all. I didn't know much, but I knew this. I did not want to die and go to hell. I did not want to spend eternity suffering in torments, the Bible said for all eternity in that place called hell and so when I got saved all I knew was that God was saving me and rescuing me and I would not have to go to that place anymore but what I didn't really understand back then friends was the relationship that I got with Jesus Christ after I got saved he became my best friend he became a friend like I've never experienced before he's always been there when nobody else is there when nobody Nobody else understands what I'm going on. When nobody else feels what I feel. When nobody else knows what I know, friend. Hey, Jesus Christ knows what I'm going through. He knows what I feel. He feels what I feel. And He's right there with me the whole way. Boy, it was good. It was a good day when I got Jesus in my life. And He made all the difference in the world. Listen to me now. You can have accolades in this life like nobody's business. You can have your names on marquees. You can get every scholarship there ever was. You can become a millionaire, a billionaire, a television star. You can have your name listed with names like that. Nope, everybody else in the world knows. But if you die without being associated with that name, you'll go to a place called hell. It's a real place. And in this life, you may get all of those accolades. You may become wealthy. You may get notoriety, popularity. You may become quote unquote famous. You may become an influencer. Huh? You might have some kind of YouTube channel and a million followers. But you know what that amounts to in the end of this thing? Nothing. And I've met people that nobody hardly knowed. And they lived in little old nothing houses, didn't have a whole lot of money. House wasn't nothing that you just, you know, awe over. They kept it clean though, amen. They took care of what they had. Listen to me. Loved people, was faithful to their church. And they just seem like they just seem like the happiest one person I ever been around. Why? You ready? Because they've been redeemed to Jesus. Amen. And there's no joy and there's no happiness in this life outside of Him. We need more Him. 
Me some more Jesus. Help me right there. Help me. me some more Jesus. Much more. Much more, Paul said. Much more. What did he do? He did more. We see rescued by Jesus, redeemed to Jesus. Lastly, we're going to reign with Jesus. Reign with Jesus. Verse 17. Look at the Bible if you still got it. Verse 17. For if by one man's offense death reigned by one. All right, there's that word, reigned. R-E-I-G-N-E-D, reign. That ain't the same as R-A-I-N, is it? Is your name Jackson? What's your name right here? I done forgot. You, you, Alonzo. I was way off. Why did I think your name was Jackson? You look like a Jackson. Okay, Jackson. What does the word R-A-I-N represent? Water falling from the sky. That's right. That's not what this word R-E-I-G-N means. Now, you're a smart young man. You know what R-E-I-G-N means? It's okay if you don't. Just be honest with me and don't lie. No, it's okay. It's good. Rain, R-E-I-G-N, means to, to set up oneself as the king or, quote, sovereign of a dominion. It's to rule. It's to be in charge. To reign. To reign. You understand? Here in the United States of America, we've not had a king reign, okay, in this land ever. We don't have kings, do we? Huh? We don't, that's not how this land works. Our government reigns. And we have a set of three different, uh, uh, what's the word, branches. Thank you, Brother Zach. That leads our country in regards to its leadership, its rule. Here it is, listen. It's reign. R-E-I-G-N. Are you with me? Do you understand what R-E-I-G-N means? If so, shake your head up and down. It means to rule or to be in charge. Does that make sense? Look back at verse 17. Look back at verse 17. For if by one man's offense death reigned by one. That verse right there, guys, says that death is in charge of all of man. In other words, you want to know something that nobody has been able to beat? Death. Nobody's beat death. They ain't cured death. Every single one of us has at one point faced that word death. Why? Because of what Adam did. Because Adam and Eve, did, look up here now disobeyed God and when Adam and Eve disobeyed God death became the boss death's the boss and you have no idea when it's coming Bonte you got no idea as a matter of fact the Bible says don't boast of tomorrow Maddie don't boast of tomorrow we don't know what tomorrow holds Ada we don't know we have no idea but you know what we do know is that if the Lord tarries, we will all one day die. That's right. Now, that's what the Bible says. So death reigns. But notice what it then says. Much more. There's that word again. Much more. We need more Jesus. Much more. They which receive abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ. We are rescued by the Lord Jesus. We are redeemed back to the Lord Jesus. But thankfully we are also going to reign with Jesus. We're going to reign with Jesus in life. Hey, I'm thankful for the life, the life that I get to live in Christ. Amen. 
I don't have a whole lot to offer. I don't have a whole lot of money in my bank account. I don't have the biggest, nicest stuff in the world. But I'm here to tell you, as far as my life is concerned, uh, I'm living the best life I could possibly live today in my life. How? If I'm doing it in Christ today. Being saved, being sanctified, being separated, and serving Him with everything that I've got to offer. I'm talking about reigning with Christ in life. We're reigning with Christ, listen to me, in liberty. Liberty, what's that mean? Who can tell me what the word liberty means? Vonte, you think you know? No. How's that for the United States of America? Come on. Liberty, what's liberty mean, Alfonso? That's why I said. That's why I said, what's it mean? He has no idea. What about it? It means freedom. How about that? Liberty. You boys need to go study something. Amen. Freedom. Liberty. Y'all know what liberty means? It means freedom. You know what you get when you get saved? Freedom. You say freedom from what, Brother Caleb? Freedom from death. Freedom, listen to me. Freedom from the penalty of sin, the power of sin, uh, freedom from the uh, uh, pursuit of sin. The Bible tells us that when you get saved, Jesus comes into you. He changes you. He reveals to you what's right. He starts working on you to be better. And we need some young people today that's actually been saved uh, uh, to stop letting sin reign in their mortal body. But to then therefore let God and His gospel and His grace and His glory uh, reign in their bodies and be freed, be freed from sin. Young people, this world wants you to be addicted to something they've got to offer. Much is said about drugs and drinking. Much is said about living in those lifestyles. But you can you can might near be addicted to anything that the world has to offer. And the only freedom that you're going to have from that addiction is Christ. You know, it's ruining our marriages. Sin, ruining our marriages. I'm thankful Papa all got to go home, amen. Y'all know y'all been praying. I went and saw him, and uh, he's a tough old bird, I tell you. And Gurney was talking to me about how that while they was in there, a uh, nurse come in and was just chit-chatting with them, and she was impressed by how long they've been married. I have no idea how long they've been married, but it's a long time. <laughs> My dad's 55, so probably like 58, I don't know, 60 years. And uh, that lady asked Gurney, she said, what's the secret? Gurney said, what do you mean, what's the secret? Secret to what? She said, secret to staying married. <laughs> and Gurney said she kind of hem and hauled around there for a minute, and Papa just kind of chuckled because he probably thought of something he ought not say, amen. <laughs> and uh, Gurney said well I'll tell you she said we just never could have done it without Jesus Amen. what they didn't know was all those bad years my papa struggled and she went to church without him for years and years and the whole family prayed and what they didn't know was the times where she wanted to just throw in the towel how did she make it more Jesus more Jesus yeah, he's the answer. He, he is the answer. Whatever he says goes. Whatever he wants is. And we got to get back to, we got to get back to him. We got to get back to him. Reigning with Christ. Look at verse 20. Verse 20, we see the life, we see the liberty, we see the legitness. Verse 20 says, moreover, there's that word, moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound. But where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. Ain't that wonderful? Amen. Verse 21, that as sin hath reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life 
by Jesus Christ our Lord. Grace. You say, Brother Caleb, how am I going to have this reign? How am I going to get in on his reign, his power, his authority? The grace of Jesus Christ. The Bible said there in verse 21, Grace, that so might grace reign, how? Through righteousness. What's righteousness? That's God's goodness, God's rightness. Through His righteousness, we'll have this reigning by His grace unto what? Eternal life. And all of this comes through and by the Lord Jesus Christ. We need some more Jesus. We need some more Jesus. Young, young person, look up here at me. You say, Brother Caleb, I'm just a kid. I need some more, uh, what is it, uh, minefield or Minecraft. Amen. I was off. I was off. I wasn't sure where you were going with that. Listen, shh, shh, shh. You don't need more Call of Duty. You don't need more Minecraft. You don't need more Fortnite. You, shh, you don't need more video games. You need more Jesus. You need more Jesus. Girls, girls, you don't need more Snapchat. You don't need more makeup. Hey, man, Brother Tony like that. Hey, man. Ada, you don't need no more makeup, okay? Y'all don't listen now. You don't need more whatever, candy. I got some little girls over here. I'm trying to relate to them here. We need more Jesus. Need more Jesus. How do I get more Jesus? Well, it starts with, are you saved? If you died right now, do you know you'd go to heaven? Do you know you'd go to heaven? Do you know without a doubt? Because you can know. Are you saved? Number two, are you serving him? Are you being a servant to him? How do I serve the Lord Jesus? Come to church. And listen to me. Young people, look up here at Brother Caleb. We don't just have church on Wednesday. We have, shh, we have church Sunday morning and Sunday evening. You're always welcome. We want you here. If you're willing to come, we'll come get you. If you're hungry, we'll find you something to eat. Amen. We will be as good to you as we possibly can. If you want more Jesus, it starts with getting saved. It starts with serving the Lord. And it starts with sacrificing the world. You say, what do you mean? Give up the world. Those drugs, those drugs, girls, those sorry, good for nothing, low down, scumbag boys that don't want to do nothing but hurt you and manipulate you need to just give up on them dogs and find somebody God would give you. Same thing goes for you boys. Same thing goes for you boys. Amen. You got to get saved. You got to serve him. You got to serve the Lord. You got to sacrifice the world. Give up on the world. The world wants you to think if you'll do this, 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 and this that everything will be all right. And they're liars. Amen. They're liars. They want to hurt you and manipulate you. What do you do? You give your life, you give your life to Jesus. You need more Jesus. He needs more of you. He needs more of you. You need to give him everything. How you talk. How you talk. You listening to me? How you talk, you need to give that to him. You shouldn't talk like the world talks. Cussing's still a sin. Cussing is still a sin. You ain't supposed to be cussing. You shouldn't be cussing. Even Look up here now, it's not prayer time. Even when you're at school or playing a sport or just with the girls, look up here now, or, or texting, it's still a sin. What do I do, Brother Caleb? Stop cussing. Yeah, stop talking like the world would talk. You need more Jesus. You need to start putting more Jesus, listen to me, in your speech. Boys at school in front of your friends, you should tell them when they tell you they've got a bad problem or this is going on. You say, I tell you what, I'm going to pray for you to Jesus. I'm going to talk to Jesus about you and ask him to help you. Are you listening to me? I'm talking about more Jesus in how we talk. We need to give to Him how we talk. We need to give to Him how we walk. 
We shouldn't just walk like the world walks. You say, what do you mean, Brother Cub? You talking about my gate mechanics? No, I'm talking about uh, uh, going places that they're going and doing the things that they do. We need to give to Jesus how we talk, how we walk. We need to give to Jesus how we dress. We need to give to Jesus our body. And that body that God's given you is not for nobody out there to see. Amen. I'm talking about being a servant to Jesus. You know what we need? We need more Jesus. And he needs more of us. And he wants more of you if you're but willing to give it to him. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Let's stand to our feet. Let's stand to our feet. Let's get us a song. Nobody's looking this way. Everybody.